In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Eternal Father, you called St. Philip the Evangelist to open his mouth and begin with Scripture, tell the good news of Jesus Christ. By virtue of our baptism, we too are called to work for the salvation of souls. Instill in our hearts the zeal of St. Philip, that we may convert hearts and minds to your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, well, welcome to the St. Philip the Institute podcast, where we talk about how to live and teach the Catholic faith, um, how to teach it to the people that we encounter, our family members, our friends, other Christians, people of other religions, and atheists. Um, So just bringing the beauty of our truth to the people that we meet. Um, Your hosts today are myself, Mickey Seba, the Seasons of Infancy and Initiation Specialist here at the St. Philip Institute, and then my co-host, Deanna Johnston, the Director of Family Life for the Institute. All right, and so we are both moms. Uh, I have three that are nine and under. And I have three that are four and under, and then one coming in January. Which we are so excited about. (laughs) Um, So just a little bit about sort of the environment of our podcast is we really come to the issues of the faith mostly as moms, Mm -hmm. as women, as catechists and ministers in the church. Um, So in today's episode, we're actually going to talk about all the things Advent. (laughs) Um, there's not enough time in a day to talk about every Advent thing, mm-hmm. but everything in this podcast will be Advent-oriented. There you go. Um, we're going to explore a little bit about the history and the development of Advent, the, the liturgical season. Uh, what's the purpose of Advent? Um, we're also going to share some thoughts and ideas on how to improve our own individual prayer focus during Advent, because I know that during this time, it seems to be really busy. <laughs> Um, we got lots of things to do. Our to-do list is probably huge. Right. Um, so how can we reclaim the focus on Christ? And how can we use Advent as um, spiritually advantageous time for us? Uh, and also how to make it real and meaningful in the home with our kids and all of the joy and the chaos that can come with this really exciting time and, and all the busyness that it entails. So that's where we're going to... Absolutely. And there is pressure, I think, especially among moms or Catholic moms, that you got to do all the Catholic Pinterest things (laughs) and all the Catholic crafts and you got to do the Advent wreath. Um, But yeah, just encouraging people to be able to to just focus on one thing. What's realistic for your situation, your family and joyfully anticipate the coming of Christ because sometimes we can get so focused on doing all the things Mm -hmm. that we do nothing. (laughs) Yeah. And then Jesus comes and eh. yeah, (laughs) we're not ready. Um, And I know, I think um, I've used this phrase before when I've been talking to people that I suffer from a chronic case of like the classic fizzler. And by that, I mean like, you know, when you take a, a soda and you pour it, it fizzles really strong at first, but if it stays out for a while, it goes flat. And so I'm kind of that way um, when it comes to Advent or really any liturgical season that I really start off strong. I have all of these like grand ideas and we even start off really well. Like, mm-hmm. you know, we're fizzling real good, but then um, I tend to go spiritually flat, <laughs> you know, and then at the end of it, you're like, oh, this doesn't even taste good. Right. <laughs> right. Um, and so we're hoping that the things that we provide today can help prevent us from going spiritually flat. There you go. Uh, so we're just going to start off with talking a little bit about just the history of Advent, where it came from, what's the purpose. I had to do a little bit of research on this um, because I actually didn't know when the season of Advent began. Um, so first, it uh, the Advent begins the liturgical season of the year. So it's like Happy New Year for the church, right. which is always a really great thing because I know sometimes throughout the year we've built up um, ideas of, I really need to work on that. I want, uh, I need to improve my prayer life in this way. I need to do incorporate more faith formation with my kids this way, pray with my spouse more this way. So there are lots of things that I think as moms we think about as the season approaches, since mm-hmm. it is the new year of the church. Um, but it is, it is a season to prepare our hearts for Jesus, for his coming um, at Christmas and also his coming at the end of the world and sort of getting our hearts right to be able to welcome him more fully into our lives um, and for those moments when he does come. Um, it is an opportune time for like self-examination uh, and being reflective and prayerful. Uh, so where are we in our relationship 
with God? How can we prepare our hearts to receive him more deeply? Like that should be our focus during Advent. And we're going to hopefully give some um, good suggestions later on in the podcast. Uh, but let's just talk about where, it, when and where it started. I like to be that person like you can find a clear date <laughs> and a clear event. And that's not the case with Advent. Um, there's no like clear beginning of like, this is when it was called Advent. This is when it started. Um, we do know that since it's a time leading up to the celebration of Christmas, um, the date of Christmas in the Christian church had to be finalized, right, and mm-hmm. decided upon. Um, but even from the earliest centuries of the church, there was a time of preparation before the celebration of the nativity of Christmas. Um, and one of the first places that I found um, St. Maximus, which was, he was a bishop in Turin in the late 300s and early 400s. Um, this is one of the earliest writings that I found on this preparation before uh, Christmas. And he said, while we are while we are waiting to welcome the nativity of the Lord, let us clothe ourselves in clean garments without a stain. I am speaking of clothing the soul, not the body. Let us not be clad in silk raiments, but in holy works. Sumptuous clothing may cover the limbs, but does not adorn the conscience. So this idea of this internal focus on kind of, I love the idea of like adorning the soul, Mm. right? And what that looks like. Um, Also, something that I found is um, in the late 500s, there were writings about ordained period times of fasting that took place before the celebration of Christmas um, between St. Martin of Taurus Feast Day, which is November 11th, um, and Christmas. So it was about 40 days, so sort of like another Lent, so to speak. Um, But it was commonly referred to as St. Martin's Lent, this time leading up to the celebration of um, Christmas. Eventually, that time of 40 days was re- was reduced to four weeks, and um, there were pretty, uh, I guess, intense um, sort of laws about the fasting that would take place during that time, and so those have been restricted. And I don't think that I actually have considered Advent a time of fasting. Right, right. But that has been an origin um, of this time of preparation before before Christmas. And I think when you look at it, it does make sense, right? So the idea of um, preparing our hearts for Christ, it's its also like, okay, so where do I need to make room? Um, how can I deny myself? Because sometimes selfishness is like at the core of what's keeping mm-hmm. us from our relationship with God. Absolutely. So the practice of fasting, it makes sense. Like, how can I best welcome God in? Well, prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, I and mean, that's why we do it in Lent. Um, It should be part of our practice year-round, but I think for me, the idea of this fasting time before Christmas was not on the forefront of my mind, so I just found it fascinating that it was part of the tradition. Absolutely, and the the church would know that that is something that we need for our souls, (laughs) uh, especially with like all of our wish lists and, and all of that, because it can become a very selfish season, but to really direct our focus to Christ, that it would be an, a, an emptying, like you were saying. That's brilliant. I know. I love our church. <laughs> um, so how can we better prepare to participate in Advent? One of the things I read um, from St. Charles Borromeo, he was the Bishop of Milan in Italy around the 16th century, and this is one of the things he wrote. Um, Beloved, now is the acceptable time spoken of by the Spirit, the day of salvation, peace, and reconciliation, the great season of Advent. This is a time eagerly awaited by the patriarchs and prophets, the time that Holy Simeon rejoiced at last to see. This is the season that the church has always celebrated with special solemnity. We too should always, always observe it with faith and love offering praise and thanksgiving to the Father for the mercy and love he has shown us in this mystery. So in the mystery of the incarnation, right, the time that God was going to save his people and send his son, that to observe it with faith and love, to observe it with offering praise and thanksgiving um, and recognizing the great mercy that God shows us and letting that be the undertone of this whole season leading up to the celebration of when God does become man in the flesh of Jesus Christ. Um, So I just thought that was um, a beautiful quote from St. Charles. He also said that um, 
Each year as the church recalls this mystery, she urges us to renew the memory of the great love God has shown to us. This holy season teaches us that Christ's coming was not only for the benefit of his contemporaries, his power has still to be communicated to all of us. We shall share his power if, through holy faith and the sacraments, we willingly accept the grace Christ earned for us and live by that grace and obedience mm. to Christ. And I know for me, like, um, you know, we, we do talk about, like, all the things. And I think as moms, sometimes we impose more to-do lists on ourselves than maybe what even other people would ask of us. Right. But this idea that, oh, we have to make this special or we have to attend to family, attend to our own children, extended family, gift buying, gift giving, Christmas parties, and it's really easy to kind of get lost in, Mm -hmm. I don't want to say lost, but that becomes our main focus. Right. We can tend to sort of, um, without even knowing it, I think sometimes, um, be drawn away from this idea that like, We are called to live by grace in this moment in obedience to church uh, and really looking at the state of our soul, like where are we in being able to welcome Christ uh, and be prepared for his coming. Um, And I know for me um, that that is um, one of my biggest struggles during Advent. It's feeling like I have to do all of these other external things and usually what gets neglected <laughs> is the spiritual. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, because you got to make the season magical and mm-hmm. and memorable, but you have to bring it back to the spiritual focus. That That is the ultimate Advent challenge. Yes, yeah. Uh, one of the things that um, I found helpful, again, when, when I was researching some of the things um, for this podcast, is I came across also a quote from St. Bernard of Clairvaux. Um, he talks about, because Advent, normally we hear about Advent having um, a focus of preparing ourselves to celebrate the coming of Christ at Christmas, um, and also preparing our hearts for when he comes again at the second coming. Um, and St. Bernard referred to a third coming, which actually falls in between the first coming and the second coming of Christ. So it's a kind of a longer quote, but I love to read it because it's just so beautiful. Um, he says, We know that there are three comings of the Lord. The third lies between the other two. It is invisible, while the other two are visible. In the first coming, he was seen on earth dwelling among men. He himself testifies that they saw him and hated him. In the final coming, all flesh will see the salvation of our God, and they will look on him whom they pierced. The intermediate coming is a hidden one. It is, it is only the elect, in it, only the elect to see the Lord within their own selves, and they are saved. In this first coming, our Lord came in our flesh and in our weakness, In the middle coming, he comes in spirit and power. In the final coming, he will be seen in glory and majesty. In case someone should think that that what we say about this middle coming is sheer invention, listen to what our Lord himself um, says. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him. There is another passage passage of scripture which reads he who fears god will do good but something further has been said about the one who loves that is that he will keep god's word where is god's word to be kept obviously in the heart as the prophet says i have hidden your words in my heart so that i may not sin against you keep god's word in this way Let it enter into your very being. Let it take possession of your desires and your whole way of life. Feed on goodness and your soul will delight in its its richness. Remember to eat your bread or your heart will wither away. Fill your soul with richness and strength. Because this coming lies between the other two, it is like a road on which we travel from the first coming to the last. In the first, Christ was our redemption. In the last, he will appear as our life. In this middle coming, he is our rest and consolation. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that was really long, but I thought it was so beautiful because we were asking um, some of our friends, like, what do you guys want to hear about? And I know one of the questions was, 
how can we prevent ourselves from getting sort of sucked into the right. commercialism of Christmas right. or how can we stay focused on, you know, the reason for the season? Right. Um, and I just thought this quote of this focusing on this third coming, which is this intermediate um, between the first and the second, um, really gives us a roadmap for how we should navigate mm-hmm. through our Advent. Absolutely. And, and it sounds like he's he's also saying, as with anything with our with our Catholic faith, that the things that we're doing should transform us. Like we should allow God's word to to impact us, to transform us so that we're not the same person from the beginning of the journey to the to the end of the journey. So kind of like with the season of Advent, how I start my Advent, I, I should be I should have grown in some way mm-hmm. by the time we light that fourth candle and hopefully <laughs> grown in generosity or virtue or, or what have you. But yeah, that there is a transformation that takes place because Christ is coming. Yeah. And I think, um, again, sometimes focusing on the external sort of overshadows focusing on the internal. But I think if we were to spend a little bit of time in preparation for Advent, um, we know we know our own weaknesses and strength when it comes to celebrating um, to celebrating Christmas. Mm-hmm. And I think at the end of every Christmas, we're like, man, I'm exhausted. Or maybe we're like, hey, I did well. Mm-hmm. Um, but we know those sort of pitfalls or those things that prevent us from really entering into the season of Advent. And based on the people that we've talked to, I do think there's a strong um, yearning to like, I really want to just engage in the liturgical season of Advent. I want to make it what it was intended to be a, right. a time of preparation, right. but not knowing really how to balance right. um, all of those different things that we feel, you know, juggling all these balls up in the air. And uh, we're like, I can't let any of them fall. Um, and that can just be exhausting. So I think even just taking some time to just examine um, all of the Christmases and the Advents we've lived through mm-hmm. and really taking some time to reflect like, okay, I want this one to be different, Mm -hmm. Um, and we need it to be different, Mm -hmm. right? God is never okay with us where we are. He's always drawing us closer to his heart. And that's one of the things that I thought about when when I was reading St. Bernard's quote is really, I think it's just just talking about um, conversion, Mm -hmm. (laughs) right? Mm -hmm. The turning away from sin and turning Mm -hmm. towards repentance. Um, turning away from uh, a past life or a past habit and entering more fully into the life of God. And I think the best way that we can make Advent what it needs to be, and I know as moms we really try to focus on making it meaningful for our children, Mm -hmm. but what's going to make it meaningful for our children and our husbands and all the family members that we are around is if we are clear in our own um in our own souls, like what our focus is. Right. Absolutely. And um, one of the things that uh, I think is, um, I, and I don't remember where, where I found this article, but it talked about like, it's okay to want to beautify your home. It's okay to want to decorate and to host parties. Um, but let's not busy ourselves with decking our homes, right? Let's deck our souls. Right. right? right. Um, beautify our souls. And so how can we... How can we do that? How can we um, adorn our souls with what God wants us to put on? And so um, two things constantly came up. Um, One is like prayer, um, putting on sort of the mentality of Christ, really trying to draw deeper into him through our own prayer life, Um, but also practicing virtue and good works. Uh, And doing that with the family as well, like drawing them into those sorts of things. Um, in the idea that like, Jesus, he abides with us now. Yes, he came in the human flesh at Christmas. Um, and yes, he will come again in glory. Mm-hmm. But right now, we're not living in an era where we are distant right. from right. God. Right, exactly. He's here. He's in his word. But most most um, tangibly, he's in the Eucharist, mm-hmm. right? He's in the sacraments. His grace flows from that. And so I would encourage any person out there, especially moms, who just feel a little bit overwhelmed. Like, how can I really focus in on the season of Advent and celebrate it properly? I would say find Jesus where he is and run there. Yep. Amen. And that should really be like when we're making our list of things to do or people that we have to buy for. Right. Like in that <coughs> list should be read scripture mm-hmm. because that's where we find Jesus in his word. Um, and participate in the sacraments as much as we can. So go to confession during Advent. 
Um, But also, besides Sunday Mass, try to go to another daily Mass. Schedule that in. Because if we're like, oh, I can't, I'm too busy, then I think that should tell us something about what our focus is. Right. Yeah. Um, But yeah, and I think sometimes just taking the things that we are doing, that we're already doing, so we're already going to Sunday Mass. We're already um, hopefully praying a little bit, but hopefully a lot every day, but being more intentional about those things that we're already doing Mm -hmm. in our own lives Um, and including that um, in our own experience of Advent because I think that um, our attitude, I don't know if you know this uh, or if you've experienced, but I know my attitude filters to my kids, Mm -hmm. (laughs) right? It's sort of like, um, you know, an aroma that you spray in your house. Like you spray it and then the whole house is filled (laughs) with that. Absolutely. And I feel like it's the same thing like as a mom, um, the environment or sort of the – attitude that I bring to my home Mm -hmm. and if I bring busyness and chaos that's what our kids are gonna (laughs) receive (laughs) right 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 and that's what they focus on and so um I think just again the best thing that we can do to really remember the reason for the season or how to make Advent what we I think even in the depths of our heart want to experience is just First, taking some self-examination of our own like what do I need to do definitely um and then when we can do that in our relationship with God, again, I think that that sends off that aroma, right? right. The sweetness of God, right? right. Um, and it filters into our family and our kids. And I think that they start to recognize that something is different. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it sets a tone for, for the season, for sure. Yeah. So is there anything um, that you find yourself that becomes like a distraction? to prayer or to like really entering into the Advent season. I think for some moms, we feel like I am barely keeping right. my head above water with um, all of the other things. Right. Um, right. And I don't think that I'm the only one. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Not at all. Not at all. I know for me, there's there's sometimes the standard, and I'm thinking of it right now. It's like, I got to clean my house. <laughs> like, really, there's so much that's that's out of order and just wanting everything to look um, externally perfect. Just having a, a clean a clean home that that sometimes it can be like wanting to have that much of a focus on the external can be really distracting or, or keep me from from wanting to or or making time for the spiritual because it's like if it doesn't look right if it doesn't look like the the Catholic home <laughs> we don't have our little baby Jesus nativity set ready to go then we're not doing Advent right when really it is about that um, that that personal encounter with Christ throughout the season. And really that's what we want our children to experience. Yes, it's a, it is a wonderful, it's a magical season. Um, and you want your kids to, and, and people can discern like how they want to navigate the whole Santa Claus, St. Nicholas thing. Um, but there, there is something different about it and our kids pick up on that. Mm-hmm. Um, but helping them to, to realize that, no, we are joyfully anticipating the coming of Christ and how we do that, um, you know, just just being able to have this posture or um, this attitude of, okay, it's not just about writing down all the things that we want. Like, I want a clean house. <laughs> I want a clean kitchen, <laughs> you know, but that it's it's more than that. It's more than the toys or, um, <clears throat> yeah, it's just a great opportunity to to focus on um, how is Christ coming into my heart and how am I responding to that. Mm-hmm. Basically, um, I didn't realize that I had kind of fallen into a rut, and not that it's bad. Like I hope we're not coming across as if like wanting a clean house and wanting it to be. Um, festively decorated, right. um, something that's different. Those are all good things. And right. I hope that we realize like those are very good things. Wanting to be with family um, and wanting to give gifts is a way that we show our love for people and doing acts of service. And all of that is really great. Um, but these things that we should be practicing like year round um, that we even struggle with even in daily life, I think sometimes I put the unrealistic expectations on myself that I'm going to do all these things in four weeks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> do you know? Mm-hmm. And in those four weeks, there's just more things that we have to do. Right. And I didn't realize how much of a rut I was in until one Christmas. Um, so my family, um, my husband's family lives um, in Louisiana. My family live closer um, 
to like South Texas. And so my husband and I and our kids, we've never celebrated Christmas at our own house. We've always been either at my husband's family or my family. So we've never um, just been me, my husband, yeah. and my kids. Um, but we enjoy being around the family um, and all of the all of the community <laughs> and all that comes with that together. Well, one Christmas, my husband and my daughter got the flu. Like three days before no. Christmas. And we didn't even have stockings. We've never had to buy stockings um, because we've always been at someone else's house. And so the grandparents have always had the stockings for the kids and mm-hmm. for us. And so mm-hmm. it was three days before Christmas. And I'm like, you know, the kids were so upset that they couldn't go mm-hmm. to the grandparents' house and see aunts and uncles and cousins because it is a, I mean, it is a big family gathering. And I wanted to make it special. So you know, two days before Christmas, I'm running around to any store trying to find matching stockings, which was almost impossible. <laughs> I was like, why doesn't that anybody? <laughs> but I think some of them were on sale. So that was good. But I was able to find just enough stockings. Like, what am I going to cook for like a, I've never had to cook a Christmas right? meal, right? We've only brought like a side dish. right? And so now just trying to do something to make it to really celebrate the day. So after I finished all those preparations um, for our own little family Christmas, uh, it was Christmas Eve, and I remember just sitting there on my couch. Everyone was already in bed, and I was really thinking about that first Christmas morning um, that Mary and Joseph, they had to travel away from where they normally are for this census. Um, They welcomed their child in a stable, right? There's no family around. It is. But, um, and I was just thinking about what was that moment like, right? Mm -hmm. And so when Mary is holding Jesus in her arms, like, I'm sure she wasn't thinking about, I mean, she was in a stable, so she wasn't thinking about, is this place clean? (laughs) Do you know? But none of that mattered. Like in that moment, like she had everything, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Um, The Savior himself, God himself in her arms. And I couldn't even, so I was just thinking about that. And I remember sitting there um, in the silence of my very quiet home, which is, I've never experienced Christmas Eve like that. We've Mm. always been surrounded um, by family, tons of cousins, lots of like excitement. And I was just sitting there like, is Jesus enough for me? Mm. And I remember that question just running through my mind, right? Because I was, in a sense, mourning the loss of this sort of familial experience that we've had for, I mean, ever since I was a young kid. Um, And, but I remember thinking, like, is Jesus enough for me? Uh, Is that all I need? Is that all I Mm. ask for? And that was, um, I think at that moment, I was like, I would like to say yes. But I was just having all these weird sort of emotional experiences and spiritual experiences while I'm sitting there by myself on Christmas Eve. Um, but I think ultimately like, that should be the focus that we ask ourselves Absolutely. in this season of Advent. Like I am, this is the time to prepare for the coming of the Lord, mm-hmm. right? And is mm-hmm. that my focus? Is he all that I am seeking? And it doesn't mean that we don't do all these other preparations, right? right? right. All these other things are good. Right. But if those other things start to overshadow Mm -hmm. um, us preparing for Jesus, then we do have to make changes. Right. And I think sometimes that's really hard because we have sort of traditions um, or certain mentalities or attitudes that we've just either, um, again, they're not bad, but inherited. Like, this is just the way we've always done it. Yeah. And breaking from that and sort of refocusing, but I think that that, when we talk about conversion, right, Um, and this intermediate coming that St. Bernard talks about, we're talking about turning away from the past Mm -hmm. and turning towards God. And and sometimes God doesn't call us, well, he always calls us away from sin, but sometimes he even calls us away from what is good to give us what is best. Yes. And, um, And I think that three years ago when we sort of had our quarantined Christmas, that that was really the first time that that reality became, like, I mean, I remember that time just embedded it so, itself so deep in my memory um, that I'm sad we missed being with the family, but I'm really glad that I was able to sort of that, that question, like, 
is Jesus all you need? Mm. Is he is all, is that what you're seeking? Is that who you are preparing for? Right. That's, that's a powerful question and something that I think all of us should take to prayer because is he enough? And I, I think a lot of us would be in a similar situation where it's like, yeah, but <laughs> yeah. yes, yes, Jesus is enough, but I also want all of these other externals or I want things to go a certain way, but being able to surrender that mm-hmm. and just to receive Christ. Like, are we in a position to receive Christ this Christmas or is he just kind of like a bonus <laughs> right. thing that happened? Like, oh yeah, it's Christmas. Yeah, and right. I think just keeping that focus is really, really important. And um, because I do, I want my house to be clean. I want to be able to invite people over and yeah, for us to have sure. like a nice gathering. Right. Um, but there is a time when those moments steal my peace and my joy because yep. <laughs> I'm like, you know, I can get a little frantic and a little like, okay, kids, y'all aren't helping. Help me clean up, you know. Right. And it's like five minutes before people are showing up and things exactly. just did not pan out the way that you are right. that you had planned. And it right. just seems like chaos. And then even in those moments, um, again, the desire to have it presentable is not bad. But then to sort of refocus, like, okay, what is the purpose of having people here? Right. To come to a clean place, like right. a perfectly clean place where it doesn't even look like people live here. Right. <laughs> um, or to have that sort of welcoming spirit, like, you know what? We are going to receive you um, just like Mary and Joseph received Jesus. Nothing but pure joy. Like, I right. am sure they weren't looking at the stable like, oh, I want to fix that. Or, oh, I hope, I hope, you know, no one notices what's over there. Like, then that moment, that's that's all they needed. Right. That was it. And right. so um, the fact that Advent is supposed to be this time of preparation, but mm-hmm. should be peaceful because that's what God brings, right? Right. Um, right. Peace and joy. Right. And um, this is this welcoming sort of environment where people feel loved. Right. Where people are loved. Absolutely. And to not forget that in sort of the busyness of everything. Right, the reason for the season. Yeah. Absolutely. And that reminds me of the the St. Andrew Christmas Novena. And I was looking up some history on it um, on the EWTN website. Um, they also call this the Christmas Anticipation Prayer, which I love that it's called that. <laughs> but basically, it's a novena that begins on St. Andrew the Apostles' Feast Day, which is November 30th. So this year it would be it would be, be, begin a little bit before um, Advent starts. Um, but it's recited. It's a traditional prayer that's it's recited 15 times a day until wow. Christmas. Um, this is a very meditative prayer that helps us to increase our awareness of the real focus of Christmas and helps us to prepare ourselves spiritually for his coming. And it's a, a pretty short prayer, but it goes, Hail and blessed be the hour and moment in which the Son of God was born of the most pure Virgin Mary at midnight in Bethlehem, in the piercing cold. In that hour, vouchsafe, I beseech thee, O my God, to hear my prayer and grant my desires. When you mention your prayer requests, through the merits of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and of his blessed mother. Amen. So you say that prayer for 15 times a day between November 30th and Christmas Day. And I love how specific it is that Jesus was born on a cold night. Maybe yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at midnight um, and that it really helps to focus in on that. This is what's happening. This yeah. is this happened like the incarnation happened. It was a real event and meditating on that. Lord, I'm bringing you my intentions. And um, I think I started doing this maybe maybe two years ago. Um, I may have skipped a few days or, <laughs> or missed a few recitations of it, but I really appreciated how, or I appreciate how it brings in the focus to like, no, we're anticipating Christmas. Like Jesus is coming. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's coming. And, um, just being able to surrender those things um, into God's hands. So if this is a season that causes anxiety, or and it and it can, it can be a very anxious season for some folks. It can be a, a really sad season mm-hmm. um, for some people. But being able to entrust all of that into God's hands um, and to say, okay, well, the the purpose of Advent is to help prepare my heart for the coming of our Lord. And Lord, help me to remove whatever is in the way of that, whether it's surrendering the fact that there will probably be laundry in the living room on Christmas. 
that's okay. <laughs> um, but if my family is holier, then it's okay. It's okay if the external things um, aren't exactly uh, what what I would want them to be, or if I can't, you know, make it to every party or make every single Christmas cookie <laughs> that right. we want us to make, or we didn't do every single Christmas craft. It's okay um, as long as there's room for Jesus at yeah. the end of it. So I um, I really appreciate when you see those sort of slideshows of the Pinterest fails. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because I feel like if I was going to make a scrapbook of my advents, it would be mostly full of like those Pinterest fails, right? And um, I'm not very crafty. Uh, I'm working on it. Um, it's hard for me to really um, – figure out how to make my home this really welcoming environment and having the right balance between things that need to be done, but also making sure that my Mm -hmm. family um, feel loved and welcome and that there's this peace in there, but that Mm -hmm. we're also all focused towards Jesus together. And that's a lot of stuff to sort of take on. Right. Um, But realizing that like, it is absolutely okay to fail. It's okay for it not to be perfect. And um, as much as I love that there's all these pictures of like, oh my gosh, it looks so great. But I feel like we're in a world where everything is like picture perfect, Mm -hmm. right? Things that we post, things that we see. And so it's almost as if there is this um, unrealistic reality that this is what it's going to look like Mm -hmm. all the time. Right. (laughs) And that's not the case. And so just learning to embrace that and like, okay, Okay, I'm frustrated or I just cleaned the house five minutes ago and now it looks like a mess and we have people coming over or I needed to do other things. Um, or sometimes like we even plan like, hey, we're going to make Christmas cards for other people. Mm-hmm. But we're like, oh, but we need the table. <sighs> There's still stuff on the um, table, stuff on the table <laughs> some stuck on uh, food from, brec- <laughs> from breakfast, right. you know, <laughs> and you're like, oh, I have to clean that. And so almost even preparing for those things becomes an act of frustration sometimes. Like, okay, but getting myself in the right mindset, right? Um, and then making sure that my kids see that, oh, you know, for us to do this task, we had to finish this one. So everyone, let's clean the table. And just trying really hard, um, being intentional about mm-hmm. the attitude that we bring into our home and right. into the relationships um, and into our prayer life with God. Right. And so um, before we kind of go to the section on what can we do like with our kids mm-hmm. and in our home, some really practical examples, I would just say um, when we look at us getting ourselves right or really trying to figure out how can I – prepare for Christmas? How can I celebrate Advent? Because what we do in our own relationship with God, that just, that does filter into our home. Mm -hmm. So I would say, look at those things, take a little bit of time before Advent starts and identify those areas where um, we are anxious, Mm -hmm. those things that cause us the most stress Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, and ask ourselves, does this have to be? Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Right. Like, this is what we've always done, but does this have to be? If buying Christmas presents really stresses you out, um, do gift cards. Right. Amazon Prime. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Just do that. (laughs) Um, Or, uh, I don't know, like, preparing all of these, like, homemade sweets to deliver. Well, like, you know, it's okay if you have to buy a few. Right? But just to identify those things. Right. and realizing those stressors and like, okay, what can I do if every year I know that this stresses me out right. and it is robs it me of my joy, <laughs> right? is it necessary right. or am I holding on to some tradition for tradition's sake, tradition sake, but it's, it's compromising my relationship with Jesus right? and always framing right. things in that. And so I would just encourage anyone to like identify those things that cause you stress and minimize that mm. or totally eliminate them. And there might be some sort of mourning, right, right. or grieving, like, right. oh, but this is just the way we've always done it. But uh, it's hard to give, like, real practical uh, advice to people because we don't know what each person's individual circumstances right. is different. Every family is different. Yeah. Um, but just asking yourself, like, is Jesus all I need? Is this orient- Is this activity orienta- orientating me towards virtue, mm-hmm. towards good works, mm-hmm. towards prayer, towards focus mm-hmm. on Christ. Um, and I think sort of framing things in that uh, will help us sort of discern oh, for sure. what to do. For sure. Um, and I'm going to mention this a little bit more when we get to the latter part of the show, but, um, but fasting. Mm. Since that was such a huge part of the preparation um, in the early church leading up to Christmas, that was always part of, you know, the, the St. Martin's 
Lent, Mm -hmm. um, this time leading up to Christmas. Um, And I think it's important because I think that during this Advent time, we do become a little bit more fixated on our desires, right? Either our desire for how we want things to look, Mm -hmm. um, our desire for how we want to come across to people, our desire for things that we want for Christmas. Mm -hmm. Um, And so taking on some fast, I think is a really, really good idea. Because it helps us to take those des- those things that we normally desire and sort of putting it into focus and having that balance. And I think that this is not, and I'm just going to confess, this is not something that I've done during any <laughs> Advent. Yeah. But after just researching this, I'm like, that's been part of the tradition of the church is to have at a time of fasting. Mm-hmm. And so what... Um, what is some sort of fast that I can do during Advent to prepare myself for um, for Christmas? Right, right. And I know we've talked about it before, just making room for Jesus. That, that means stuff's got to get out of the way. So <laughs> yeah. whether that's having more time of silence, um, you know, fasting from listening to the radio or um, listening to podcasts while you're not this one, but <laughs> yes, that's fine. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, um, yeah, just having time of silence right. during the day, um, being able to just make those little sacrifices that it doesn't necessarily have to be from, you know, fasting from food all the time, but just how can I make little sacrifices to make room for Jesus that it should, there should be a discomfort there, but to joyfully do it, like, right? not to make everybody else around me miserable. <laughs> I'm talking to myself mostly right now, <laughs> but, and that, that brings to mind, you know, f- for me, um, this is this, I think, of my four or five pregnancies. Um, this is, I think this is the second time I've been really pregnant during Advent <laughs> and it can, that can sometimes add to the, the discomfort or the, the anticipation our babies do in mid January. And so at the same time as we're thinking about Christmas, like, okay, we got like eight weeks before this, this baby comes, but being able to, to, to take that instead of, um, being anxious or uh, just focused on, okay, I'm really pregnant and uncomfortable, (laughs) but taking time to reflect on, okay, what was the Blessed Mother going through Mm -hmm. um, in these weeks leading up to to Christmas or just kind of uniting that I just think there's an there's an opportunity for for more spiritual reflection in that joyful anticipation of our own child that's coming next year. So anyone who is expecting, whether you're super pregnant or a little bit pregnant, um, yeah, to 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 take that as just a concrete example of of something to to reflect on, like how is how is reflecting on this pregnancy um, or uh, or the longing for for a child? Um, how can God use that to draw me deeper this this Advent? That's awesome. That's beautiful. And I think, too, um, because I think sometimes, and when I was a teacher, I would try to explain it to my kids this way, because when we would talk about li- the liturgical seasons, mm-hmm. um, we would talk about, because Advent and Lent have the same colors, mm-hmm. there is um, this undertone of, like, penance. It's a, it's a penitential season. Um, and trying to describe sort of the difference, and I use lots of examples, and this analogy might fall short, but what I would say is that Advent is like a time where a woman is preparing, she's pregnant, she is preparing um, to bring a child into her home. Mm-hmm. And there there is this, like, there is some stress in there, right? Like, okay, we got to get these things. Um, baby has a place to sleep, <laughs> um, clothes to wear, right. car seat. diapers, yep. car seat, <laughs> safety, right, all those things. But there is this joyful undertone to mm-hmm. it. Um, but there are things that we have to, oh, we got to clean this out to make room for, to make room for the baby and the baby's right, things. Right. Um, and Lent is like a, I told them like preparing for surgery, mm. you know, that there are, there are, you know, that you're about to go through something painful and sometimes it doesn't make sense that we have to be cut open in a, in order to heal or that, um, something painful has to happen for us to be better, but that's just the way that it is. Um, and so I would use that analogy to sort of explain the different I guess, um, attitudes or tones of each of the seasons. Um, but what a beautiful thing to be able to be pregnant also during, during the Advent season, um, and to use that as a time to really meditate on what the blessed Virgin would have experienced. It's just a beautiful gift. Um, I will try to remember that. (laughs) This is beautiful. This is, it's a good thing. Absolutely. 
All right. So now how do we make this real to our kids? Yeah. Right. I know we've talked a lot <laughs> about like getting right with ourselves, which is really important again, because the, what we establish, the routine that we establish in our home does filter into that. And so, um, what are some ways we can take this season of Advent um, because we are surrounded by secular Christmas oh, everywhere. Sure. People already have Christmas lights up. Confession, I've already gone to look at them. <laughs> right. Um, Same. And uh, Christmas music is everywhere. If you go shopping anywhere, they already have Christmas stuff all over the place. And so how can we still maintain some sort of like um, religious practice within the season mm-hmm. of Advent without overwhelming ourselves, but also making sure that it's being communicated to our children yep. that this season um, is distinct from Christmas, that mm-hmm. there's something uniquely different, um, what we should be focusing on um, is important. Mm-hmm. And so how can we do that? Good question, Mickey. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was I actually called my mom on the way to work today. I was like, mom, what did we do when uh, when we were little? And, and she reminded me of, of some of the things that uh, that she tried to incorporate because she she was really good at doing like some of the Christmas crafts and using tissue paper and making really cute advent wreaths. But one of the things that she reminded me of was, um, you know, trying to combat this attitude of selfishness. She had this um, like glass jar that we would have on the kitchen table, and there were all these slips of paper that were like purple and pink, and on each one was just written a, a different act of service or an intention to pray for during the day. So every morning, each of us would just draw um, a, a slip of paper out of the the glass jar, and it was really simple things because um, and you. Can make it age appropriate for for your kids um so it was things like you know pray for a teacher pray for folks in a red car or a blue car uh pray for people on an airplane today um draw a picture uh to make someone happy or say a glory be when you see a bird or read a book to a sibling help pick up trash just different acts of service so it it helped to draw the focus to something external to to another person and how can i be a gift to another person it was just a very simple practical thing I was like, okay, I got my one my one task um, for the day. Pray for your parents. Pray for someone you don't like. Oh snap! Yeah, put like, that one back in. Right. <laughs> I'm sure if right. I was little, now I can do that. But I'm sure right. when I was like, mm, I'll Maybe do that not. one another. I'm gonna <laughs> do a redo. Right. right, right. But it just it helped us to um, to have uh, like a purposeful prayer for the day or and it was just for like this is what this is your one thing for today and just making those types of things very practical and age appropriate and they can get more complicated and um uh yeah as those kids get older but just to to do something really simple and I was like oh yeah I can do that with with my kids oh that's a great idea um that reminds me a little bit about Something that we started a few years ago, I love having a tree up. And I know my husband and I, we had this discussion, like, how can we make Advent different from Christmas? And so we debated about, like, the tree. I'm like, well, what if we made an Advent tree instead of our Christmas tree? And one of the things that we would do at dinner is we took, um, we just got purple and pink construction paper um, from the store. And then at dinner every night, we would have the kids write, if they can write, if they can't, they would just tell us. And we would write it, something that they want to pray for or someone that they want to pray mm-hmm. for. And so each of us would get our own little slip of paper. We'd write that, and then we would start a chain, and we would wrap that around our tree, and it became our Advent tree and prayer chain. And then when Christmas came, um, we would take the Advent chain off, and then we would decorate mm-hmm. with Christmas. So, And I think whatever people do, it's important to make sure that there is something different that designates Advent um, and Christmas. Right, yeah. right. Um you know, an Advent wreath is something that I think is also really popular when mm-hmm. we do it in our churches. Um, normally, I'm the one going to Hobby Lobby like the day before Advent, like, are there any more pink and purple candles? <laughs> Amazon. <laughs> right? <laughs> um, but even doing that, and I know sometimes they have like really nice prayer services yep. that can go along with them. Yep. And especially if you have little kids, that's just not possible. Right. Right? I mean, you could just lie and be like, Jesus is the light of the world and he's coming. Right? We're going to celebrate yeah, his coming. And blow it out. Yeah. And blow it out. Right? <laughs> and each kid is like, but I I want to light it and I want to blow it right. out and then, then no, light that. it three times and be like, but what does the candle symbolize? <laughs> right. That Jesus is the light of the world, you know. But I want the fire. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, but that's a really good practice to sort of bring in. I think mm-hmm. anything visual, um, young kids, I think, gravitate things that they can see Absolutely. and touch and do. Um, so the Advent wreath is something, um, setting up your nativity scene. And I've had people do this to where 
um, if they ha- if there's little figures, um, then they will set up the nativity scene in stages. Mm. So they'll set up, you know, the the frame, um, and then maybe they'll put um, a wise man there or a shepherd there or an animal there. And so there's this um, gradual, like, growing of the mm-hmm. nativity scene, but to always leave Jesus out until Christmas, Christmas and then put him in the nativity nice. scene. Um we also, and this kind of reminds me of what you did with the jar, but um, we got this book called The Giving Manger. Ooh. And so it was this thing, like, you do something, so it was this manger, and it had, like, little pieces of straw. And so every time mm-hmm. that you would do something good, you'd put a piece of straw in the manger. Nice. And so you're preparing a comfortable place for Jesus. Nice. And so um, with that idea of having, um, you know, doing these things, mm-hmm. that if you connect it to, like, preparing a little a bed of straw or cloth or whatever you have, right? Yeah. Um, that when they do a good deed, they would um, put a straw in the manger nice. um, to make Christ coming where he's comfortable, right? Nice. And welcome. Nice. Um, that's something else that we would do. Uh, last year was our first year doing this thing called the Jesse Tree. Oh, yeah. Um, I didn't know much about it uh, before, so I had to do a lot of research. Um, but it is a tree that you decorate with ornaments, um, and the ornaments represent an important event or person in salvation history. Mm-hmm. And it really talks about how God prepared the people, the Israelites, for Jesus coming mm-hmm. at Christmas. Um, and so now this tree uh, basically becomes the story of salvation history. And there's all different kinds out there. I'm sure if you just Google Jesse tree, um, you're going to be able to find tons of right. things. You can make your own um, ornaments. You can you make can... your ornaments. You can buy ornaments. Um what I did is I took a green poster board. <laughs> it kind of looked like a Christmas tree. <laughs> Again, I'm not very crafty. Um, just cut out this tree, and then um, I found some paper ornaments that the kids could color. So each kid yeah. had their own thing because I knew they would fight over who was going to put up the or- ornament for that day. And so um, so as they were coloring, I would read from Scripture that story. So they would have an idea of what what that ornament represented so they're they're getting the whole story mm-hmm. of salvation history and then they would just like tape it or glue it on anywhere that they wanted on nice. the tree they really enjoyed that um and so i think we're going to try to do it again this year um one of the other things that we do is in, instead of elf on the shelf we have the good shepherd nice. um, or the shepherd's treasure i think and so you have this like stuffed animal of the shepherd and you also have the stuffed kind of animal of jesus i love that so you hide jesus and the shepherd goes through your house trying nice. to find baby Jesus. And that's and a lot less her. creepy than Elf on the Shelf, <laughs> honestly. <Right. laughs> um, but my kids would be really excited. Like They named their, their shepherd Alan. Nice. Um, we don't know an Alan. Uh, but Alan the shepherd. Alan the shepherd. And so that's what we did. That's so great. Um, but there are so, so many things that can be done. Right. And right. I, and and I, I like what you were saying about the visual for kids because I, and I'm my, my kids are almost five, three and one. And we've noticed that um, because I feel like we're just kind of getting to the stage where they're old enough to kind of appreciate a little bit more of the the types of stuff that we're trying Mm -hmm. (laughs) to do with them. But because Christmas is a very visual and like the, the songs that we hear, the, the, the environment that we're around, um, so being able to give them these these faith based symbols and to show them how physical our faith mm-hmm. is that yeah we we have we have the candles we've we've got the smells and bells we got we've got it all yeah. So, yeah yeah that's really helpful and I think too um, not being overwhelmed picking one thing yes just um, one thing. well because last year when we did our advent tree we didn't do some days <laughs> right or yeah. our, our Jesse tree yeah I um, mean some days you don't get to light your candle right uh, and life just happens or right. the candle breaks and you're like I can't right. go buy another one today um, that again don't compromise doing something good that's leading you to Christ um. So don't compromise that if it's not going to be perfect, right? right? Pick, right. pick up and do it again the next day. And right. I think that your kids will will notice and your family will benefit from those things. Um, okay, so now we're at the part of the show called like Into the Chariot. And mm-hmm. this is when we give you one bit of advice to take what we've talked about in the podcast and mm-hmm. really try to live it or um, how to take what we've said and teach it to someone else. Mm-hmm. And so um, 
my into the chariot that I would like to give you guys sort of a little challenge is to think of one thing that you can fast from this Advent. Mm. Sort of bringing back that. To, mm-hmm. And maybe some people do it. Congratulations if you do. <laughs> You're my hero. Um, it's not, it's just something that wasn't in my realm of thinking before we actually prepared for this podcast. So what is one thing that you can fast from this yeah. Advent? What can you sacrifice? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. And I would just encourage whether you're a family or as an individual, what is your one thing this Advent? What is the one thing that you can faithfully commit to? Um, whether it's, you know, doing the Sunday evening Advent wreath as a family, doing a Jesse tree, um, or faithfully praying the rosary daily, doing the St. Andrew Novena, but focusing on one thing, not to say that you can't do all the other things too, but what is the one thing? Um, cause I think like we were saying earlier, sometimes we can just make the list too big and mm-hmm. then it's like, well, I'm just not going to do yeah. anything. It fizzles <laughs> at this point. and we go flat. <laughs> right. There you go. Yeah. Very yeah. good. Wonderful. Well, that is um, everything for today's podcast. So we want to hear from you, too, though. Absolutely. And we're excited. Um, This is our, well, I guess I'm not supposed to say what, we don't know what episode this is going to be released as, but um, as we're we're getting started with releasing these episodes, you're going to hear from Mickey and I again. Um, you'll hear continue to hear from Dr. Chisenkos and Bishop Strickland, um, and also Doug Berry and Father Justin Braun, the director of youth formation um, for the institute. Um, but all of these podcasts, all all of these episodes, have the goal of just helping you to teach and to live the Catholic faith um, in whatever walk of life you're in. So like Mickey said before, she and I will provide a very feminine and motherly perspective sometimes mm-hmm. <laughs> to different topics. Um, but yeah, we just hope to to, um, to just meet folks where they are and, and provide a good perspective. So you can follow the Institute on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and of course our website, which I think is about to get a makeover. Yeah, um, it Philip is. So Institute. be on the lookout. Yeah, stphilipinstitute.org. Um, and we also just want to hear from you because uh, we can come up with topics, but we also want to know like what do what do folks want to want to hear about in a future episode? So you can email us at podcast at stphilipinstitute.org, um, and we'll make a note, and maybe your topic will be a future episode. Yeah, which would be great. And then now that we've been talking about Advent too, if there's something that has really worked for your family oh, and yeah. you want to like take a picture or share it, we would really love to know what the people of East Texas are doing um, that have been beneficial to the family. So you can go ahead and send that to the podcast as well. Yeah. Um, and then maybe we can share with others. That'd be awesome. All right. So now we're going to um, close out with a prayer from the bishop. The Lord be with you, and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.